things I'd like to show you today is how you can really improve the performance for your aircraft. And what I'm referencing is an aircraft that you may have had in your fleet for quite some time. This is an example of, of the type of aircraft I'm talking about. This aircraft was built in 1999. It's a miniature aircraft XL. Top of the line design for its time. Still actually a very nice flying aircraft. This bird was equipped with analog servos. Specifications were about 0.22 on speed, around 90 to 120 ounce inches of torque. But the biggest single difference that these servos had relative to what's available today in the new digitals is the precision and the power off of center that the digital servos offer. What I put in this bird for today's example is digital servos on right and left cyclic, collective pitch, and I left the elevator or fore and aft cyclic servo remaining with the analog that was in the bird when it was originally built. The point in terms of performance that you'll feel is phenomenal. This bird actually goes from roughly twice the speed, servo speed, and anywhere from about 30 to 50 percent increase in torque, which is phenomenal and quite a bit of, of improvement in itself. But the biggest noticeable difference is that when you put the digital servos in, right off of center movement on the transmitter stick, a degree or two at the most, the digital servos are at maximum torque. The analog servos typically are at about the 20 to 30 degree uh, rotation range before you'll see maximum torque. So let's dig in a little bit to some more of the details to do the conversion and to do it well. First thing we want to do, and I referenced it a second ago, is replace the servos themselves. I have the analog servos here that we've pulled out, and as I mentioned, this particular servo back on elevator or in the helicopter's terminology, fore and aft cyclic, is still an analog versus the new digital style. So what I'm going to do is take the digital servo that's going to replace uh, my analog servo here and pull it out. Now for time's sake today, I'm not actually going to pull this servo out, but I, what I'd like to do is go through some of the do's and don'ts, things you want to look for and be very cognizant of and careful with when you convert to digitals. While you do have a major improvement in performance with the digitals, because they are so powerful, their precision is so good, they draw more current. There's some things to watch for there. First thing you want to do is, if you don't have it, get a good quality, a reliable battery checker that will check your batteries under load. There are a lot of brands available. I happen to have one here that's from the Futaba manufacturers, uh, same as the, the radio that happens to be installed in this bird today. But the point I want to get to is this. Anytime you install a new set of hardware into your bird, and for that matter, anytime you fly, you should check the capacity of the pack. To do that, we simply take the, the checker itself, plug the pack in. Here I've got a, a five cell, six volt airborne pack. And then we hit the start button on our, uh, on our uh, meter. And what we're looking for is a voltage range. Well, what you can see here is that this pack under a one amp load, this is an adjustable uh, device, this will range from one amp to three amps load placed on the equipment. So it simulates what your aircraft will actually see in the air. You can see here that it's running at about 6.5 volts. So we're good to go. This is a six volt pack. Always be sure that you check the voltage. One of the things you want to also do when you do your installation or reinstallation in this case is be positive that the, the, the runs to the servo, meaning the links, the push rods, et cetera, are as free as you can get them. Digital servos will not tolerate being stalled. Two things happen. One is that the, the current draw goes up so exponentially that you can actually zap the current from your pack, crash the bird. And two, while the performance is superb on the digitals, they don't tolerate being stalled. So the last thing you want to have happen is have any kind of a bind or stall situation in your linkages that go to the servos. Be very careful with that. Last thing you want to do is make sure that you're very careful with any kind of chafing or damage that might occur to the leads that are on the servos and the battery packs. I have as an example in front of me here a couple devices that not only give you a nice cosmetic appearance, but they also protect the leads from the servos, the battery packs, the gyro, etc. The first item is, is uh, what's uh, more or less, I'll call it a Chinese puzzle style tubing that expands and slips over the leads themselves uh, to do a nice clean installation. Once you've cut it to the length and installed it over the lead that you want to protect, 
take the shrink wrap tubing, which you can see over here next to it, cut a small piece off, half inch, three quarters of an inch long, and shrink wrap that down around the end of the protective uh, uh, cloth. And that gives a really nice appearance. It also keeps the protective uh, sleeve in place and keeps your servos from having any kind of chafing. Last thing I want to show you here is the performance difference between the servos themselves. So I'm going to turn on here. We have actually digital servos installed in this bird, as I mentioned, on collective pitch and also on aileron, and we left an analog servo back here. So I'm going to try to move these where you can see them, but, but let's, let's move the, the elevator servo first here, which is analog. While it's a very nice servo, pay attention to the speed. There's maximum speed on the analog servo. Keep in mind this servo is about 0.23 seconds to go from one extreme to the other, which is 60 degrees of rotation. Now let me show you the comparison with the digital servo. Huge difference. I mean, you can visually see the difference very quickly. What you can't see, but believe me, you can feel in the air, is that this style servo, the digital servo, is so precise at center. When you move the stick, its power or the torque that it generates is so immediate, you feel it on the bird in the air. One other point that I'd like to make is that the performance gains that we've seen for the rotary aircraft going from analog to digital servos are also available for all other types of aircraft, including the soaring or sailplane guys. Here's an example of a JR thin wing digital servo. This is a DS-168. The performance on this servo is phenomenal off of center, has very high torque, and in case of the soaring guys, one of the things they run into with the high speeds they run in today's composite birds is possibility of flutter. The digital servos with the stronger gear trains stop that. The same performance gain is available for the giant scale crowd. This is the JR8611A. It's an ultra torque servo. Puts out about 260 ounce inches of torque at 4.8 volts and about 320 ounce inches of torque at 6 volts. Same performance gains will be had here. Let's take a look at how this would apply to an analog aircraft. This is an aircraft that's currently equipped with analog servos, very nice quality, ball bearing, cordless motored servos. Aircraft flies very well, but put in a servo like this 8611 or an 8411 from JR or the Futaba equivalents, and the performance on this goes up enormously. While the analogs are good, they just don't touch the centering capability and the torque available, particularly for stringent maneuvers, that the digitals do.